you know, I'm going to say I'm concerned, but not surprised. Um, based off what I'm seeing so far from this Ahmad Arbery case, of course, we saw, everybody's seen the video now that has gone viral of um, Ahmad Arbery's public lynching of two white supremacists in Georgia uh, who just basically murdered, lynched Ahmad in broad daylight while he was jogging, acting like he was some kind of fugitive, you know, and they were trying to do some kind of justice when in fact that they were just wanted to look, basically wanted to just lynch a black guy in public. And that's what they did. They accomplished that. Um, but when it comes to Ahmad Arbery's family, his supporters, right? The, I see these patterns, right? I've, I've seen these patterns and the patterns have already happening. Marching, protesting, praying, right? We, we've seen that. They have done that already. Marching, protest, praying. It is powerless behavior. It has done nothing for black society for over 500 years, okay? Marching, protesting, praying does nothing. Tangible actions do something, which of course, we live in a system of racism and white supremacy. That is impossible to do so. Impossible to do so. Unless we have our own everything. We completely separate from everything and have our own, right? And I've talked about that for years on my channel. Anybody follow me for any significant amount of time, you guys know, I've been talking about separation for a long, long time. Right? So we've seen the marching, we've seen the protesting, we've seen the justice calls, and we've seen the thousands of memes, we've seen people making, you know, all kinds of things. We, we are resorted to, again, powerless symbolism. We love symbolic victories, powerless symbolism. That's what it's all about. You know, marching, protesting, praying, making memes, making hashtags, right? What, what, what is power is changing the laws that benefits black society. What is power is having reparations in which they've already dealt with regarding this COVID virus. So they got the money. Um, that'll benefit black people from the suffering and the atrocities of our ancestors, which are causing us, which have caused us traumatic brain injury due to epigenetics. I've talked about that before many times. All right. So shout out to Tariq, uh, Tariq Nashi for posting this just now. Um, apparently this is Ahmad Arbery's best friend saying that the execution, the murder, the lynching of Amon Arbery was not about race. I'll play the clip. Arbery's best friend says the community deserves to know the truth. It's not about one race, mm -hmm. you know, because we're all a community and we are all a community and we all see this as a tragedy to the community. Mm -hmm. It's not about black. It's not about white. It's not about race. You can't make this about race. It's about what's right and wrong and what happened. Right. It's not about race. It's about a community. Yeah. So you let me know if Ahmad Arbery jogging through the neighborhood, right, in the middle of the day, being gunned down and chased by two white supremacists because he fit the description of some suspect. Right? Fit the description. What is a description? Something that is very specific in describing a perpetrator, right? To law enforcement who did unlawful acts. You have to describe them. So again, I've always made the reference to, well, this guy's gonna tell the truth once he's in the inter interrogation room. He's gonna describe the person who robbed them to a T. Yeah, he's a black guy. He's six foot five. He has uh, black hair. He's black, right? <laughs> You're going to describe how he looks to a T. So they describe this guy, or they saw this guy as a black guy. He's black. He was not clear, right? He's not invisible. So they had to describe this guy and pick him out. They picked him out 
because they saw a black guy jogging and executed him. So, of course, it's about race. It's always about race when it comes to these lynchings, these public lynchings of unarmed black men, women, and children. It's happened time and time and time again. And again, like I said before, it's the same damn pattern that black society has been doing for 500 years. Marching, praying, protesting, and now in the social media age, hashtagging, memes, it's all powerless symbolism. We have done nothing to make sure we have tangibles that's going to change and benefit black society for generations and generations. Not a goddamn thing. So, like I said before in my last video, uh, talking about this, don't be surprised. You're going to see another Amber Geiger situation where they're going to coddle these white supremacists. Uh, the family of um, Ahmaud Arbery is going to forgive them. They're going to sing prayers and scriptures, right? They're going to coddle them. They're going to hug them in court, kiss them in court. These are some ugly motherfuckers, sidebar. I mean, these two, these two motherfuckers are ugly as shit. The son looks like the son looks damn near as old as the father. They look like brothers, to be honest. But he's some ugly motherfuckers, man. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, like I said, man, I don't be surprised there's going to be another um, Amber Geiger situation. You know, um, just just calling these white supremacists, kissing them, hugging them, praying, you know, everybody in the courtroom, holding hands with them, caressing their hair. You know, stuff like that. And we, you know, so like I said, based off what we saw here from this guy here, it's not about race. You know, you're going to see the pastors going, pastors going there with the Bible, saying some prayers and scriptures about forgiveness. And that's, you're going to see that. Don't be surprised if you see that. Now, like I said, I don't want it to happen, but don't be surprised if it does happen. Right? So. Yeah, man, I, 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 you know, this case is, you look at this in a situation where um, you just basically use logic and common sense. This is a open and shut case. Anybody their mama can see, you know, Ahmaud Arbery was murdered unjustly. Uh, he was executed. He was lynched. Um, this was just a heinous, heinous, heinous act. But this heinous, heinous, heinous acts have been happening to black society for over 500 years. This just this happens to be on camera. Right? Um, so, like I said, I, I, I'm not going to be surprised that we have another Amber Geiger situation. Um, the, uh, the people who are, or the family and the supporters of, of uh, Ahmaud Arbery, they have, they seem to be brainwashed with, uh, I'm just going to say it, with religion and Christianity, right? That has been plaguing black society for, like I said, 500 years. We have been, you know, given slave Bibles, right? Um, and things of that nature to, to, to basically manipulate our minds and control our thought processes when it comes to, um, accepting the dominant white society's atrocities aka Stockholm Syndrome right accepting our abusers behavior and loving it right so that's what it is man um, so again we'll see how this case unfolds uh, but you know these guys have been arrested that's step one charged with murder uh, but Again, these guys could get a slap on the wrist. We know this. We've seen this happen before. We, we These guys could be coddled and, and protected in, in court. Uh, the families of uh, Ahmaud Arbery could definitely go into court and hug and kiss them and say forgiveness prayers. We've seen this. We've already seen this before. We've seen this, we've seen this movie time and time again before. Right? So, yeah, those are my thoughts on that, fam. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. GMOG Media TV. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at GMOG Fitness. You already know what it is. Signing out. Peace.